Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to be answering a relatively simple question. How cold can the actual stars get in our galaxy? As a matter of fact, we're going to take a look at some of the coldest stars out there, and we're going to explore them using Space Engine, and possibly talk about some other features of those stars. Welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So all of those bright stars that you see in our skies are relatively hot, and that of course includes our own sun that's currently at a temperature of about 5500 degrees Celsius just on the surface. It's obviously a lot hotter on the inside, and it's also even hotter on the outside right here in the so-called um, coronasphere, uh, basically the uh, so-called atmosphere of the sun. But we're not really talking about the hotness today, we're actually going to be talking about the coldness. As a matter of fact, this is one of the questions that was raised uh, by many of you, uh, and some of you actually wanted to know, well, so how cold can the stars actually get? But to answer this question, we actually need to first define what a star is. Well, it's a very kind of a broad definition, but we're going to start with the sun, that's obviously a star. We're going to take a look at some of the um, smaller so-called stars. As a matter of fact, we're going to take a look at an object known as uh, Glias 229. Um, there's actually two objects there. And both of them are relatively small, there they are. We're going to approach the bigger object first, and this is a red dwarf. This is a star that's only about um, 3200 or 3300 degrees uh, Celsius. It's a lot cooler, uh, it's obviously not as bright as our sun, it's a lot smaller. And it's only about 8% of the mass of our sun. And so these are basically the boundaries for the main sequence stars. Essentially, if you're any less in terms of mass uh, from what this object is, you're then not going to acquire the nuclear reaction needed to essentially create all of this beautiful energy that then um, illuminates all of these objects out there. So that's uh, that's what we would call a main sequence star. But in, nowadays we actually define stars as something even more extreme. As a matter of fact, we now have found um, quite a lot of the so-called brown dwarfs, one of which is actually in this system right there. Actually, no, that's not it. That's the uh, planet we've discovered uh, orbiting around this star. I think the brown dwarf is a little bit farther away. There it is. So the brown dwarfs are also kind of considered to be stars, and they're essentially a lot, a lot cooler than um, than even the red dwarfs uh, like Glias 229a. So the Glias 229b, its companion star, is a brown dwarf that is essentially kind of uh, Jupiter looking. It sort of looks like a gas giant, but it's not a gas giant. It's actually an almost star. So here the temperature is about 700 degrees Celsius. Uh, it's, ve it's very, very massive. It's a lot more massive than Jupiter. As a matter of fact, it's almost 32 masses of Jupiter, but it's not massive enough to acquire its own nuclear reaction. So it sort of starts off as a supermassive gas giant and then acquires a lot of heat on the inside and there might even be something going on on the inside that creates even more energy but all in all it's not really the main sequence star as Glias 229a but it is a star we do consider these to be stars but that's still quite hot so 600 or 700 degrees celsius is still quite hot you obviously will probably die standing here and uh, will not really survive very long, even on the outskirts of this particular uh, brown dwarf. And just to give you a comparison with Jupiter, so this is what Jupiter would look like, and this is what the temperature on Jupiter would be. Let's uh, zoom into Jupiter really quickly. And here it is. As you can see, visually they look very similar, uh, but in terms of mass, it's obviously about 30 times less massive. And in terms of temperature, it's also uh, much, much cooler. The temperature um, on the surface here is about minus 165 degrees Celsius. So here you would obviously freeze. But there are quite a lot of objects in between these two, in between Jupiter and Glias 229b. And we're going to take a look at some of them. As a matter of fact, we've discovered quite a lot of them in the last few years using the infrared telescope known as WISE. And so first, let's actually take a look at one of the youngest brown dwarfs. This is the star known as Tady-1. Um, actually, this is going to be a red dwarf. Never you mind, this is a red dwarf. And so is its companion Tady-2. But in reality, though, and you can actually see uh, there's something orbiting right there. It's a warm ice giant. So let's actually zoom into it, take a look at it, because it does look very beautiful from here. Um, in reality, Tady-1 is actually, um, it's a brown dwarf. 
and they seem to have this uh, procedure generated gas giant orbiting around them uh, but yeah td1 is actually a very very young brown dwarf even though it appears as a red dwarf in space engine uh, so this right here would be um, a very very beautiful very bright brown dwarf with a temperature of about 2600 degrees celsius so this would be one of the hotter brown dwarfs out there and it's not really a main sequence star it's not really a star that has nuclear reaction in it it's just a very hot brown dwarf but in the last few years nasa scientists have also discovered a new family of brown dwarfs that are even cooler than the ones we've previously known uh, one of the first ones that was discovered was actually the temperature of uh essentially a room temperature it's it's actually cold enough for you to kind of touch and to even very comfortably orbit around without uh, essentially being burned to death uh, but unfortunately because of the gravity you might still feel very uncomfortable as a matter of fact um let, let's just take a look at one of these brown dwarfs from the wise uh repository so let's maybe let's just see if this is a brown dwarf there you go why is 1711 3500 with a temperature of about 500 degrees celsius so here, if you were to actually orbit around this object, um, right around here, the tidal effects would be really, really strong and you'd probably not feel very comfortable. And if you were to land on the surface of it, that I'm going to do in one second as soon as I slow it down, if you were to stand on the surface, it's very, very likely that you'd probably get squished into a very small pancake because the gravity here is much, much higher than even Jupiter. But since it is a gas giant, technically, you would possibly just fall through until you hit the bottom and then get burned into crisps. Or specifically a very crisp pancake because you would also be squished uh, but anyway so that's not really what i wanted to take a look at i wanted to take a look at one of the coldest objects so nasa scientists have discovered a new sort of series of objects that they now refer to as the y brown dwarfs and these are the coldest possible objects and they refer to these objects as ultra cool brown dwarfs uh so i actually have one saved right here super cold star and it's a star known as WISE 08551-07144. This is an actual star we discovered a few years ago. And as you can see, the temperature here is quite chilly. It's actually minus 25 degrees Celsius. It's sort of the temperature on a cold winter night in Canada. And it's basically what it would feel like if you were to somehow reach the surface of this brown dwarf that you can even barely see because it's basically so, so dark. Uh, there's a sort of a black shape right there that you can see, but it's basically, it's that dark and it's that cold. And currently, as of uh, November 2016, this is the record holder for the coldest star out there. This is basically it. It's as cold as we found them. And this, of course, not including uh, objects like black holes that would obviously be much colder. But uh, this object right here, that's only about 7.5 light years away from our own solar system. That's right there that you can actually kind of see from here. Um, this object right here is essentially the coldest we have so far. And it's only about twice as far away from us as the closest star to us, which is Proxima Centauri. And so this object might be actually visited by us one day. But this is of course for now, and as a matter of fact, many stars will one day become even cooler than this, including this object of course, because everything will eventually start approaching the temperature of the background uh, universe. And so here, if I were to take a look at our own sun, it will one day um, become a white dwarf, and that white dwarf, after about quadrillion of years, basically one followed by many, many, many zeros, um, will actually one day become something called a black dwarf. We don't actually have any black dwarfs in our universe just yet because our universe is not very old, but when it becomes a black dwarf, it will be essentially the coolest star possible. It will be as close to the coolest star as, as, as it can be. And all of this is actually very speculative, but mathematically, we're pretty sure that all of the white dwarfs out there will one day become black dwarfs and be very, 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 very cool. But maybe not as cool as me. Ha, huh, just kidding. Anyway, let's actually take a look at uh, one of the um, black holes as well. Maybe at one of the more popular uh, black holes out there, Cygnus X1. Cygnus X1 uh, has another object right here, it's called Cygnus X1a, and this is of course a black hole. So this would technically be a remainder of a star that then became super, super cold and is now orbiting around a much larger star. But but the interesting part about the black holes is that uh, they too obviously have temperature and they too obviously have some kind of emission, specific, uh, specifically here we're talking about the Hawking radiation. And so the temperature of a black hole, even though it actually says 4,000 4, degrees here, the actual surface of a black hole would be measured in a very, very small number. It would be less than one degree Kelvin. It would be basically 
as close to absolute zero as possible and these these would be the coldest objects out there but since we don't really consider them to be stars anymore we don't really want to talk about them just yet maybe we'll do it in another video in the future where we'll talk about just the black holes themselves but for now that's really all i wanted to say in this video I wanted to introduce some of the coldest stars to you in, in this particular video and specifically this one right here which is currently the record holder for the coldest possible star in our solar system. I'm sure we'll find more but for now this is it. This is the star that is minus 25 degrees Celsius. It's, this, it's as cold as we uh, have found them and it's basically going to be a record holder for quite a while now because it's actually very difficult to find these uh, brown dwarfs because they basically barely emit any energy at all. They're so cold that they stay dark and invisible and kind of just float around our, so, um, our galaxy. And anyway, I think I just witnessed or noticed a planet orbiting around it and I think this uh, particular brown dwarf actually has several procedurally generated planet, planets orbiting around it including one right here that I'm going to approach and take a look at. And this is, of course, uh, also procedurally generated and very, very dark, so you can't really see anything on its surface. Uh, but this is what it would look like to orbit around a black dwarf on this particular planet. So this planet is actually right here, and you can barely see it. And there's that brown dwarf, uh, the super cold brown dwarf in the distance. You can kind of only tell it by its um, aurora emissions on top and the bottom. And so that's essentially what it would look like to live in this particular solar system. It would be very, very dark and very, very scary. And anyway, thank you so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of your support and thank you for all of the comments. And uh, don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching educational um, videos using video games. And don't forget to potentially support this channel on Patreon if you want to help us grow faster, better, and basically help me buy better equipment for the future videos. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you for watching. Came you later. And as always, bye bye. And since this is so dark and I can't really see anything, I'm going to escape from here. And you'll also get to see what, there it is, what this object looks like from a distance in Space Engine. So if you're flying around in Space Engine and you see a tiny red dot, it's very likely to be a brown dwarf. And there it is. So beautiful. All right, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.